So in this video, I'm going to give you the reasons why you should not retire. It could save your life. Though I think retirement is kind of a bad way of looking at uh, your life and it's a paradigm I don't subscribe to and I'll get into the details very soon. That said, the younger that you consider retirement, the better off you will be. So why you shouldn't retire? If you look at stats, people uh, tend to die shortly after retiring. I don't know what the stat is today, but I remember a long time ago when I was a young whippersnapper, I was looking at this whole thing, and the, um, the idea that was sold to us was that you uh, study hard, you develop skills, you get a good job, and then you work at that job in that field, and then when you retire, you can do whatever you want. So a lot of people would do that, and they would pursue careers that they don't really like too much. They kind of stand it, but they don't enjoy it, with the hope that they'll earn enough so that when they hit 55 or 65, whatever it is, that they'll have enough money to be able to retire and finally be able to do what you want. Now, when I was quite young, I looked at that and I said, that doesn't make any sense to me, especially considering a lot of, a lot of times people will die shortly after retirement for whatever reasons. Also, as you're working towards retirement, who knows, you could die, you could have health issues. The fact of the matter is, enjoying life is a lot easier when you're younger that, than it is when you get older. I'm not saying that you can't enjoy life when you're older, and you can if you exercise and eat well, and you have a healthy lifestyle, for sure. But, you know, nobody's going to argue that it's not easier when you're young and healthy and full of piss and vinegar, right? So I was quite young and I thought that whole idea of working your entire life at something you don't really like so that eventually you can do something you like when you're much older. I thought that didn't make any sense to me. So I said, how about you figure out what you do like and try to make money, try to make a career out of what you like to do. That I thought was a better idea. So. It gets a little bit more fine-grained than that as well. I took it to a new level. Instead of thinking in broad terms, I like to be a developer. I like to be a React developer. I like to be a lawyer. I like to be a fireman, whatever. Instead of thinking in broad terms like that, I said, let's get a little bit more precise. Let's consider how you like to live your days. Do you like to get up early? Do you like to get up late? Do you want to get dressed up and go into work every day or do you want to work at home? Do you want to work with large groups of people or alone? Do you want to work outside or do you want to work inside? you want to work with your mind or you want to work with your body? Do you like to take breaks? Do you want your job to be done at 5 o'clock and that's it, you're off? Or do you want to be able to take breaks during the day? These are all questions you should be asking yourself, like really that finely detailed in terms of how you want to live. So in the context of software development, I'm assuming a lot of you watching this are interested in software development, you have to ask yourself, do you want to go corporate, big corporations, and what that implies? Do you want to work for small corporations? Do you want to do startups? Do you want to do freelance? These different paths within software development suggests a different type of work life, a type of work environment. So you got to look at all these different things as well. So first thing you do, if you're looking at changing careers or starting your career, consider, my suggestion, consider how you like to spend your days, as I just suggested. Map that all out. If you like flexibility, you like to have control of your time, freelance might be for you. Starting a business might be for you. Working for a smaller company, which will give you more likely anyway to give you more flexibility in terms of your time. On the other hand, if you want to be able to clock out at five o'clock, you don't want to have to work weekends, uh, you want a very regimented and controlled work environment, maybe medium larger organizations might be good for you. And languages will affect that as well. Whether you do C Java or C Sharp, that's usually big in enterprise. If you do JavaScript PHP, that can tend to be smaller, medium sized businesses. Yada, 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 yada. But this video is more about retirement, why you should not retire. Instead of thinking about finding a job so I can eventually retire and do what I want, I say flip it. 
figure out how you want to work, what you want to do, what was fun for you, and do that. Spend the extra time to be able to position yourself so you can put yourself in a good position where you can do the type of work that you want to do so you don't have to worry about retirement because what are you going to retire to? You already enjoy what you do. So in my life, I started thinking about this when I was quite young, 17 or 18. Uh, to be fair, I was surrounded by business in my, my family, my father, my mother, etc. So I was kind of aware of the different lifestyles. I've seen people go from working for somebody to starting a business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it gives you perspective. So, so you understand, last time I had a job working for somebody, I was a bouncer in a nightclub at 18 years old, I think it was, maybe 19, 18, 19. And since then, I've always had my own businesses. I made the mistake of when I hit about 30, 31, something like that, I was in a position where I didn't really have to work. I didn't fall as backwards into a ton of money, but I was in a situation where I was very comfortable where I do an hour of work a week and I would make, be making more than most people my age. So because when I was quite young, I almost died, I said, you know what, I'm just going to take a ease for it. took it for 10 years, but it gets boring after a while. Going to, coff going to get coffee, going to brunch, it gets lame after a while. So I started getting back into things. But that being said, as an entrepreneur, as a freelancer, you have a lot of choice, you have a lot of power, you have the freedom as a freelancer to be able to decide what type of jobs you want to take on, what type of coding, for me it was coding, because I think coding is a superpower, I think it allows you to do all kinds of different things. You, you know, in coding and in software, there's all these different types of software development. And it's so diverse in many respects that you can do software development, you can do coding that's, that's better for the visually inclined. You can do software development for people who are more math, if you will, detail-oriented. You could do software development where you can do more architectural work. So there's a lot of flexibility there in terms of the type of coding you may be doing that will match your personality type. So you got to look into that a little bit more. I teach the web stack because it allows for the broadest range in terms of the types of coding you can do, visual, macro, architectural, detailed. Um, it also gives you the widest range in terms of the types of jobs you could do in terms of you know small medium, big large enterprise, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So going back to the original topic of this video, why you shouldn't retire, instead, you should consider retirement as early as possible so that you can plan out your life so that your day-to-day -day work is actually your hobby. Make your hobby your work or make your work your hobby. It becomes a lot of fun. So in my experience, I've done this my whole life, even with bouncing. I did a lot of martial arts. So for me, being a bouncer was like I could put my stuff to the test. I admit it. That's what, that was the situation. So I, I enjoyed bouncing for the couple of years that I did it. Um, and then I went on to other things where all other businesses, which were, well, bouncing was a business, but I, that was my last job. But when I went into businesses afterwards, thereafter, everything that I've done was all related to my interest at that time. So I've always pursued businesses that were reflective of my interest and my hobbies at the time. So it was always fun. But I would pivot, I would change. It's normal that after X amount of years, it could be two, it could be 10, who knows, that you might have different likes and dislikes, your lifestyle choices may change, you, you move on, you know. When you're younger, you may like certain types of music. When you get older, you like other types of music. Same thing with your career. But the underlying message here is that you should think about your life in terms of your, your day to day. Start with the fine grained analysis, as I suggested at the beginning of this video, where you you think about how you li like to live your days and then you see how you can match that to uh, to a type of work or a type of job or a type of business that uh, would be fun for you. So do I think retirement is bad? No, but I know several friends who are now retired and as I did uh, a long time ago, 
they just end up pivoting to something they like. So why not do it initially? Why not do it now? Why not, as you're listening to this video, no matter what age you are, why don't you start considering your lifestyle, how you like to live, and then start developing whatever you need to develop, skills, contacts, connections, whatever you need to do to be able to position your life so that when you wake up in the morning, it's just fun for you. So retirement becomes something you don't really consider because why would you retire from something you like to do? So case in point, the last decade or so, I've been working with a whole bunch of districts across the world, mostly North America, and I've developed and delivered a platform, an educational platform and curriculum that uh, optimizes uh, teaching code in the classroom. I've been doing this for over 10 years. I really enjoyed the process. It's like, if you're building any software, it's, uh, it's a very creative process. Uh, you have to be nimble. Uh, you learn new things about uh, how people, what people need and how they like to work. And it's been a lot of fun. Recently though, in the last couple of years, I decided to experiment with this mentoring program that I do now. And uh, I start off very slowly to see if I like it. Again, to see if I like that lifestyle. And I found that I did. I got a kick out of being able to talk with people and uh, mentor people from literally all over the world, from all walks of life. I have 18-year-olds, 60-year-olds. I have people who have never coded before. And I have people who have who are chief uh technology officers and businesses. So it's quite a, quite a lot of fun. It's quite a lot of fun. So if you would have asked me 10 years ago, I was going to get into mentoring, I, would have said, I wouldn't or even consider it. But again, my choice to do this now is largely based on the fact that I like the lifestyle that it affords me in terms of, uh, not financial, but in terms of my day-to-days, how I conduct myself. I like to mentoring people and helping people out. So it's it's a different game than providing a, a, cr- a curriculum and a software for school, for districts and schools and so forth. Uh, although it is related. Anyhow, I just say, I just state that as an example. And you never know, maybe in five, 10 years, maybe I'll decide to pivot to something else. You never know. You never know how it is. Again, What I do is my hobby. Uh, When I do videos like I'm doing here, this again is another expression of my hobby. I wanted to get into cameras. I said, I'm going to get into cameras. So I'm also do YouTube videos as I learn how to work with cameras and get nice blurry hands like this. And uh, so it's fun. I don't look forward to retirement because I'm doing what I want to do. And that's my suggestion to you guys. Don't think about what will happen in 10 years or 20 years. Think about now. Make your life now fun. At the same time, don't ignore basic principles of personal finance. I always suggest have at least six months to a year of emergency F you money. So you have choice. Number two, you should be saving like a mad person so that you don't have to uh, depend on getting a job or working to be able to pay the bills. That's huge. Save like a mad person. You can watch those videos because when you do those two things, well, you do F you money, save like a mad person. uh, And within four to five years, you can find yourself in a position where you don't have to worry so much about working. And third, you make it so that your day-to-day is not a grind, it's fun then you uh, have ultimate freedom, psychological freedom, real freedom. It's pretty good. If you don't know me, my name is Steph. I am otherwise known as Uncle Steph. You can check out UncleSteph.com. I mentor people in coding, software development, and careers. I teach people how not only how to code, but how to turn that code into money-making skills, become a freelancer, get a job, etc., etc. Check it out. Links below.